We need to understand, and I'll get over, well, not get over, we'll get to it real quick of what all has already taken place. But at this point, they are at the base of a mountain, and God has rested upon this mountain, His glory has rested upon the mountain, and they see with their own physical eyes Moses going up to what they considered here it said it was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Now there's a lot of teaching in that part right there, but what you need to know from this part of this account, that Moses went up to the mountain, into the cloud, into this consuming fire. This was the last time they had seen Moses. Okay? They haven't seen anything else about him. The last time they seen Moses, this one who delivered them from Israel, from not Israel, but from Egypt, this one who came back and worked miracles because what God was doing through him, the plagues, let my people go, Pharaoh and his horses, all that, they are being led by Moses, and this Moses that they have been led by has seen for the last time up into a mountain in the pillar of fire, okay, in the cloud. Now, this may have led them to believe this was going to be the last time they ever saw this man, Moses, okay? Now, what took place within the next 40 days shows in their heart that they really didn't trust Moses and they really didn't trust God. Now, Israel ran out of patience, I believe, long before the 40 days. We might assume that after the 40 days, this is when they had the calf built or made and had Aaron do all this, but it was within the 40 days. I want you to imagine how long it would take to make a golden calf. How long it would take for all of them to gather up all the gold and have this all made. It doesn't, he did, Aaron wasn't able and didn't have a factory and to stamp his calf out, okay? So this needs to lead, you see to understand, it leads me to believe in the study that long before the 40 days, possibly as soon as Moses left, their hearts were already turning. Now, what Israel should have been doing, now we can look at it from this point, right here, without judging, and let you know what Israel should have been doing. You know the gold that they used to make this calf? Do you know what it was supposed to be used for? Look in chapter 25. If you have your Bibles turned into 24, look at chapter 25 in the first verse, and we'll see what they're supposed to be doing with their gold. And then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. And the offering, it says in verse 3, which you shall take from them gold, silver and bronze, blue, purple and scarlet, thread, fine linen and goat's hair, ram skins, dyed red, badger skins, and the list goes on. A station wood, oil for the light. All this is supposed to be for the Ark of the Testimony and for the tabernacle. So what Israel should have been doing at this point in time was giving to the Lord. Preparing themselves to give to the Lord because of what they had already seen. Now, their true heart came out whenever they had turned back to Egypt. In their heart, they had already turned back to Egypt. Do you know how we know that? The calf the bull, the cow, is a, one of the symbols of the many gods that Egypt, Egypt worshipped. That, don't forget, had been there for over 400 years. They had been in this land of Egypt. They had been exposed to pagan worship all of these years. Now, these people have been brought out of Egypt, but their hearts were still in Egypt a certain, to a certain extent. Now, folks, how we can relate this to us today, and I will in just a few minutes even more clearly, but how we can relate to this today is that whenever you come to the Lord, you get saved. You know, there's a process called sanctification in your life. It's called daily setting aside, daily setting apart parts of your life more today than what you did yesterday. Isn't that the mark of the beginning of a relationship with God? 
that when you come to the Lord, the Holy Spirit deals with you to come to Him first. And praise God, out of His mercy, He accepts you just as you are. Aren't you thankful that God does that? He accepts you just as you are, as a cold, rank sinner. You need to understand that. For us to go any farther, before you come to Jesus, you are nothing. You are a sinner. You're no better than the worst sinner you can think of on the face of the earth. Well, my sin is not as bad. I didn't do this and I didn't do that. If you come to God with that pretense, then you haven't really come to God. Because you need to understand something. In the eyes of our Lord and Savior, sin is the most ugly, grotesque thing that can ever be seen. That's why He cannot look upon sin. Did you know that? Well, my sin, I just told a little white lie. That's all I ever did. I just stole a piece of candy from the convenience store. And the list goes on about these little, little sins. But it, is there such thing as a little sin when it comes to, in relation to our, us and God? The Scripture teaches us that all of us have sinned and we've all missed the mark. Remember last week or two weeks ago, we kind of got a little chuckle about my little mistake that I made in the church that night. And ever I, when the pastor said, is there anybody here that has never sinned? And I thought he said, is there anyone here that has ever sinned? Remember that? You know, is there anyone here today that has ever sinned? Raise your hand. I got a few non-sinners in the building this morning. Man, we need to talk. All right, now, I know, we're just having a little fun. But that's the thing. We all need to understand from that perspective, in God's eyes, before we come to Him, we are sinners. And out of His mercy and out of His grace, He accepts us. When we come to Him in that pretense, when we confess Him, the Bible tells us, as we read last week in Romans chapter 10, and believe in our heart that the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead, and ask Him to save us, the Bible says that we shall be saved. But there's a process that goes on from that day forward. And we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. But right here we see that Israel has already turned their hearts back to Egypt. They had turned their hearts back to the worship of these Egyptian gods. Something else you need to understand. That the cow and the bull were the embodiment of this God known as Baal. And some of the different religions today, there is a goat that they worship, and there's cows that they worship. This goes back way farther than a lot of folks realize, and it's the worship of Baal. Now that word Baal, that name Baal, spelled with two A's, B-A-A-L. And we will read a lot about this worship of Baal throughout the Bible. Now, less than 40 days, the Israelites broke the second commandment. Do you know what the second commandment is in the Ten Commandments that they had already received? Did you know that? Go to Exodus 20. Back to Exodus 20 and look at verses 4 through 6. Now realize, this has already taken place before chapter 32. Okay, This is somewhat of a chronological order whenever we go from Exodus chapter 1 to Exodus chapter 24, there's somewhat of a chronological order. Now, from 25 down to 32, that's all the explanation of God giving to Moses about how they, Israel is to be governed, the tabernacle, and so on. But from Exodus 3 to 24, it's somewhat of a chronological order. And we see this, the happening, and how they were prepared. And we, if you read about that awesome event, that whenever God came down to the cloud and, 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 and Moses prepared the people to meet God at Mount Sinai, and here is what he said to them. In Exodus chapter 20, God spoke all these words. Now, how he spoke was with thunder and lightning and the trumpet. And the people were sorely afraid. And they didn't want to talk to God anymore. They wanted Moses to talk to him. Okay? Give you a little bit of a little bit of knowledge there about how awesome an event this was. God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, I told you to start at verse 4, we'll start at verse 2 to get more of a picture here. You shall have no other gods before me. Commandment number one, right there. There is to be no other God before me, he says. Because he asked this question further in the scriptures, who is likened unto me? Who can you liken unto me? Who can you put beside me? Who can counsel me, God says, and get a reward? There is no one. 
The second commandment is this. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. The second commandment is the one that they broke. In less than 40 days after they heard. You might look and say, man, that was quick. Remember the title of the message? How soon we forget. Now, I want to just go through a little bit of uh, chronology here, chronological order of what took place in a very recent past with the Israelites. Just three months and a few days after they had been delivered from Egypt, we see that in Exodus chapter 19, verse 1. Now, I want you to think of everything that took place since they had been delivered, as God told them in Exodus 20, verse 1, what had took place after they had been totally delivered on the other side of what we know today as the Red Sea. Back then they called it the Sea of Reeds. We call it today the Red Sea. Think of all that happened at that time. After they seen the plagues, after Moses had came back to Egypt and said, let my people go to Pharaoh, we went through the ten plagues, which was a super awesome event. It was just amazing. At the end of the tenth, tenth plague, there was Passover, the night before they exited. That's why the book is called Exodus. Before the exodus out of Egypt, Passover. Now, we celebrate Passover every year. We celebrate it by observing the Seder meal and talking about all of that and how it relates to Christ. This was the first Passover, okay? They celebrated, pass they had Passover. The Exodus was the very next day out of Egypt. The Red Sea, the parting of the Red Sea, okay? They walked, the Bible says, if you go back and read it, they, and start in Exodus chapter 3 and read all the way up to 24, they went in the midst of the sea, the Bible says, on dry ground. Okay? That's an awesome event. Okay, that's something that took place. This is all within three months. We're not talking years here, folks. We're talking a very short period of time. Within three months, the Passover, the Exodus, the Red Sea parting, 